We can also use the Mars database and MGC to correct the gradients in images taken with color cameras and dual-band narrowband filters. In this video, we'll look at two examples. In the first, we have NGC 6888. If we stretch the image with the RGB channels linked, the background will turn completely green. Remember, in most cases, we have to unlink the RGB channels before we do the color calibration. In this image, we have a gentle vertical gradient, which is slightly green toward the bottom. To apply MGC, first we have to calibrate the flux. To do this, we need to switch to narrowband filters mode. We'll use the default wavelengths because this is a dual-band narrowband filter where the red channel contains the H-alpha emission and the green and blue channels contain the oxygen-3 emission. The bandwidth for this filter is 7 nanometers. Now we apply the process. Now that we've calibrated the flux, we're going to open MGC. We're only going to use the Mars DR1 database because it's the one that contains the H-alpha and oxygen-3 bands. So, in the RGB channel dropdowns, we select the corresponding Mars band identifiers. First, we'll apply the process with the default settings with the Show Gradient Model option enabled. The model looks pretty correct, and it shows the shift toward green at the bottom of the image. To adjust the scale factors of the two Mars bands more precisely, we're going to decrease the gradient scale. If we lower it to 512 pixels, we start to see traces of nebulas. At 384 pixels, these traces become more obvious. Let's analyze it channel by channel. First, the red channel. Here we will almost certainly need to increase the scale factor because bright traces of the nebulas remain. Let's increase it to 1.6. Now we're inverting the nebulas, so we need to lower the scale factor. Let's try 1.4. With a scale factor of 1.3, we minimize the nebula traces. Let's leave it like that. Now the green channel. Let's increase it. If we use a very high value, the nebula structures start to appear inverted. We need a value that helps to minimize the nebulas. This looks about right. Now the blue channel. We need to increase the scale factor here too, probably to one similar to the green channel. Now we can increase the gradient scale again because this is a very gentle gradient. A gradient scale of 1024 successfully models the lower greenish area, which turns reddish toward the top of the image. Now we can correct the image. Here's the result. Although it looks as though some greenish areas remain, this is because the image doesn't have a good color calibration. So, what we need to do now is apply MGC to the main view and do the color calibration with SPCC. Remember, to calibrate the color in images like this, we need to enable narrowband filters mode, and here we want to change the bandwidth of all three filters to 7 nanometers. As the background reference, we'll select this area here and use it as the region of interest for the background neutralization. Finally, we change the white reference to Photon Flux. And we apply the process.
The graph looks incorrect because there are a few stars with very pronounced brightness variations. But if we zoom in, we can see there's a very strong linear trend. This curve is due to the blending of emission lines that occurs in a color camera. We'll talk about this more in the next video. Once we've done the color calibration, we need to link the RGB channels and reapply the auto stretch so that the image is displayed correctly. Here's the image with the gradient correction and the color calibration. This second image was also taken with a color camera and a dual band narrow band filter. In the red channel, we have the H alpha, and in the green and blue channels, we have the oxygen 3. As in the previous example, we'll calibrate the flux in narrowband filters mode. The default wavelengths are the right ones for this palette, but we'll change the bandwidth to 10 nanometers. Now let's open MGC. We're going to work on a preview. We're not going to disable the MarsU database, but MGC won't use it because it doesn't contain any H-alpha or Oxygen-3 data. First, we'll correct the gradients directly on the RGB image without showing the gradient model. The vignetting has been corrected, but a diffuse structure has been added on top of the nebula, especially in the red channel. We probably need to adjust the scale factors manually. Let's show the gradient model. Indeed, there's a large void within the H-alpha nebula, which we can see more easily in the individual channels. Here, we need to lower the scale factor in the red channel. The nebulas are starting to get brighter now, so we probably want a value of around 0.55, perhaps 0.53. Let's move on to the green channel. We'll probably need to increase the scale factor here. When we increase it, we may find that it doesn't work entirely well. While the nebula on the left is starting to disappear, we've created a large void within the nebula on the right. Why does this happen? In a color camera, the oxygen-3 and H-alpha emissions are blended because the green and blue pixels are also sensitive to the H-alpha wavelength. These nebulas here don't actually emit in oxygen-3. The emission mainly corresponds to hydrogen. Therefore, in some images taken with this type of equipment, we can't completely eliminate the nebulas, so we need to find a compromise. Something like this, for example. And now the blue channel. Let's increase the scale factor a little and try it out. This is the gradient model, which unfortunately will have this void and this brighter area. In any case, this model with 1024 pixel structures is very effective for correcting any residual vignetting. This red nebula has been overcorrected slightly, and this area here is greener, but the vignetting has disappeared. To see the final result, we're going to apply MGC to the main view and calibrate the color. In SPCC, we switch to narrowband filters mode and input the correct bandwidths. We'll select this corner as the background reference. Finally, we change the white reference to Photon Flux. 
and we apply the process. If we zoom in on the graph, as in the previous example, there's a slight curve toward the redder colors due to the blending of emissions in the camera pixels. Now we open STF, link the RGB channels, and apply the auto stretch. And here's the result with the gradient correction and the color calibration.